Hey, welcome to my journey and to another Prep Once, Eat Twice, Getting Ready for Surgery. Yes, here we are again, and I am totally enjoying getting these things in my freezer. So this installment is all about back in the day. I didn't change anything. I made all three of these recipes the way I made them when the kids were home. The kids are 28 and 36. So that'll give you an idea how old these recipes are. I, I like, you know what? I want to go old school just for a few of them anyway. So we made chicken tetrazzini. Now, that's my way because chicken tetrazzini is usually made with spaghetti noodles. And I make mine with noodles, like broad egg noodles. You know what I mean? And that's how I've always made it. And it's delicious. <laughs> I'll tell you it is. And then we made, let's see, we made, we made hash brown casserole. And it's delicious. And then we made... Mexican lasagna, and it's delicious. Now, I have a hash brown casserole. Actually, you know what? I think I have all three of these recipes on my website already, and they've been doctored. Something's been done to them for whatever diet I was on at the time. Weight Watchers, low carb, low calorie, whatever. Whatever I was doing, they were fixed for that period of my life. These are not. So... I will, well, I'll have a link below so you can go to the ones I did today. But then you can also search. I might just call them, you know, that name too, whatever. But I think, actually, what I have on the website is chicken spaghetti. So it's not called Tetrazzini, but I'm pretty sure my hash brown casserole and my Mexican lasagna are called that. So I'll just name them like, you know, the Roman numeral two or something like that. So anyway, but they're all family favorites and it, it felt good making them it really did it just kind of gave me a back in the day feel you know so that's all we'll talk about and we will let's see was there anything we was going to talk about i don't think so no let's just start cooking the first thing i want to do for our tetrazzini is cook the vegetables over here i have four tablespoons of butter that I'm letting melt while I get this together. I need one stalk of celery, and I already had this cleaned and in the fridge. And I like to cut my little small pieces. So, just kind of thin dices. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the butter and let it be cooking. And then I need one 8 ounce package of mushrooms. You can get the whole and chop it yourself. I just went ahead and picked up the sliced. And I'm just going to run my knife through it a little bit. Just to get them a little bit smaller. Oh, that is my chicken. I have my chicken in the Instant Pot. This is a great recipe for leftover chicken, for rotisserie chicken, for chicken that you cook and put in the freezer specifically to use in recipes that call for cooked chicken. I'm cooking mine fresh. And it is in the Instant Pot. I just have about a pound of chicken breast. And then one onion and I have this already in the fridge and that's I'm gonna use every bit of it then that is a big let's slide over that's a big pan of vegetables but they're gonna sweat down so we're just gonna let these cook until everything is tender the vegetables are done we're just gonna just leave them right in the pan and set them aside and we're going to get our biggest pot 
to ball the noodles. And I'm using wide egg noodles. This was a 16 ounce package, but I've already taken some out, so there's 12 ounces in here. So 12 to 16 ounces will be fine. This is gonna make a big pot of tetrazzini. So the, um, yeah, I'm trying to think, what was I trying to tell y'all? Be sure and salt your water really good. Give your noodles some flavor. And then when the noodles get done, drain it, but keep this same pot because we're going to use it to mix everything in. So my noodles are done. I have them draining. I'm using the same pot, took it off the burner. I'm going to use one can cream of mushroom. And one can cream of celery. And then two cups of sour cream. Let's mix this together. Okay. Then we just need our cooked vegetables. Our cooked and shredded chicken. Eight ounces of shredded cheddar cheese, and I shredded this myself. And then we'll mix this up together real good before we add our noodles. Okay, then here are our noodles. I like to thin it out with a little milk, and that's just um, till it looks and feels right. You don't want it too thin, but I just think it, it makes it nicer if there's a little bit of milk added to it. Okay, now I have this eight inch baking dish, two quart, what round, if you want to use round, just two quart size. So we're going to try to scoop half of this. Let's see. You know what? Half might be. So half, let's see, I'm going to set that aside. What we're going to do next is take this provolone cheese slices and we're going to slice them smaller and get it open. Get up here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking sliced provolone cheese and just slicing it down into thinner strips. And we're just gonna place those across the top. That was four slices. Might have could have gotten by with two slices. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna save that because we'll use it. We'll use it in a minute. Now this will go in at 425, and I don't know how long. It's always the way I've cooked until it's done, <laughs> until it's nice and bubbly and the cheese is all melty. So let me pop that in there, and then we're going to package up the rest of it for the freezer. Okay, I just have a bag, chicken tetrazzini, 425, add provolone cheese. 
I don't need to I mean if I had room I would go ahead and put it in a baking pan but my freezer's getting full so some of these things I make don't necessarily have to be frozen in a baking dish and this is one of those things because as soon as it thaws oh y'all didn't see that just pretend like y'all didn't see that as soon as it thaws then I can put it right in a baking dish and bake it okay now we mash out all that air and this can freeze flat just like that what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice up one more piece of cheese because I think two was plenty. So I'm just going to add one more to what I have here. Pop it in this little freezer bag, a little baggy, I should say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get this to tape to the bag. If it wasn't so messy, I would just stick it inside, but that's really too much of a mess. And there it is. That is ready for the freezer. And I'll be back when the other one comes out of the oven. Here it is, fresh out of the oven. Bubbly, browned, nice and cheesy. I didn't pay attention to how much time it was in 10, 15 minutes. Very, very short amount of time to get all melty and ooey gooey. Well, you see all that cheese? <gasps> now, this would make four huge portions. I'm going to say this would be maybe six servings. would be a good um, serving amount for that. So hold on, let me let it cool off and give the taste. This is so homey and so delicious. The cheese on top, it just gills the lily. But I think it needs it. So there you have it. There it is our, well... We'll just say chicken tetras any my way. So stay tuned for whatever's coming up next. For our hash brown casserole, I have the two because, you know, I'm doing it for the freezer. You want them thawed. Now, the one I'm cooking tonight is thawed. The one I'm putting in the freezer, I just split it in half. I left these in the bag until I'm going to put it together because I didn't want them thawed and then refrozen. So if you're doing one big casserole, thaw all of them. If you're going to freeze one, definitely keep the one you're going to freeze um, frozen. Then we'll set this aside. Nope. Let's see. I think we sprinkle them with cheese. Let me, let me check my recipe. Yes, we sprinkle with cheese. I need a cup and a half of cheese. And that is 12 ounces. So it's going to be six ounces on each casserole. They're going to be cheesy. I'm just going to eyeball it. Pretty much everything we're making for the freezer is nice and cheesy. Cheese and casseroles just go together. Cheese and casseroles and cream soup. <laughs> okay. So that's that. Now we'll set them aside. And what I have in here, let me find something to stir with. Um, yes. Is one stick of melted butter. 
and to that I want to add one cup of sour cream and one can cream of chicken soup. And then we're going to stir this together really well. Now we need one small onion chopped. And this is what I have in the fridge. Mm, you know, to me, onions are to taste. And I really have the taste for onions. Okay, let's bring these back over here. I'm going to try to do half and half. Oh, I'm making a mess. Then, we just need to cover the top with cornflakes. Just plain old cornflakes, and I have mine in a bag over here that I keep with my flowers and toppings and breadcrumbs and all that kind of stuff. And there's, there's no amount. You just want to cover the top. Now, these need to, well, this one will be wrapped and labeled and frozen. This one will go in a 350 degree oven for 35 to 40 minutes. It'll be nice and bubbly. And then, let's see, I'll be back. Here it is, fresh from the oven, 35 minutes. It smells absolutely heavenly. So we're going to scoop some out. Look at that cheese. Oh, boy. I tell you, the cornflakes makes it, too. Okay, let me get a taste. It's absolutely delicious. Boy, we hadn't had this in a long time. So there you have it. My hash brown casserole. Okay. I think we might have one more thing coming up. I'm not sure. So just hang on. The first thing we want to do for our Mexican lasagna is to boil our lasagna noodles. And I have 12 just regular size. Now, I like to use the Kanye ball instead of the oven ready if I'm going to freeze this because I don't know how that would set up and fare in the freezer. So I'm going to put those in there. Kind of loosen them around. Y'all know how to boil lasagna noodles so what I want to do when these get done I won't show you. I'm going to drain them. I'm going to leave them sitting in the strainer, cooling off enough to touch while we go on to the next step. That's why I want to do this first. Now that the noodles are done, we're going to cook our sauce. So I have a pound of hamburger, and I need an onion. And y'all know, onions to taste. So there you go. We're going to cook this until it's done. And then drain it if necessary. Okay, I went ahead and turned the burner off because we don't need to cook this part. But the residual heat from my oven or stove will probably warm it through, which is fine. You can warm it through. I'm using one package of taco seasoning mix. Just use your favorite. One six ounce can of tomato paste. And then one can of water. We'll mix this around 
right quick. And then we need one can of chili beans. Or if you'd rather, you can use pinto beans. But undrained. And I'm just using the great value chili beans. I'm going to stir this together. Okay, now we will put our lasagna together. And my original recipe uses a 9 by 13. So we're going to take this is the recipe and just split it in half. So the first thing you want to do is just add a spoonful of sauce on the bottom. Just something for the noodles to rest on. Okay, we have 12 noodles, so we want to put half on the bottom, so that's going to be, I hate when they stick together, hold on, there's going to be six in each pan, so I'm just going to tear them in half. This might be a little bit more noodles than we need putting them in this smaller size dishes I think it is we're just gonna do two on the bottom instead of three okay now half the sauce goes down so that means a quarter in each side because the layers are half half and half so I'm gonna eyeball this best I can and we will do half the cheese this is eight ounces of Monterey Jack cheese so that would be a quarter then we will put another layer of lasagna noodles down so I just had a few lasagna noodles that are just gonna have to take one for the team I don't know what else to do with them <laughs> And then the other quarter of the sauce, which I might have got more on the bottom than I should have. And then the rest of the cheese. This will go in a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes. I'm pretty sure it's uncovered. I forgot to look. Hold on. Let me look. Yes, that is uncovered. 375, 45 minutes. This one will get wrapped like we wrap all of our other ones. Plastic wrap directly on the surface. Layer this way, layer this way. A layer fall this way, this way. Label it and freeze it. So I'll be back when this one's done. I was going to show you. I got the one for the freezer already. And as you can tell, I let this one kind of go too long. I got busy cutting up a, I don't see, I got crunchy. I got busy cutting up a watermelon and a cantaloupe. And I didn't check on it. This went not quite 45 minutes. So definitely check on yours at least at the half hour mark. So I'm, say so this is four servings. That looks like a, a decent sized serving. Uh oh, I brought half the other one along. <laughs> well, this one's going to be messy. Well, anyway, there it is. Now, let me give it a quick little taste. I totally forgot. The sour cream and the avocado, I didn't have any fresh, but I had the the little avocado cups. Not It's not guacamole, it's just avocado. You can put taco sauce on it, more shredded cheese, lettuce, black olives, anything you would put on a taco or a burrito or something like that. So...
I will give this little heads up. Any of your lasagna noodles that are sticking out are going to get maybe a little crunchy. So, just kind of watch that. Maybe be a little more, more careful than I was. Oh, boy. I forgot just how good this is. And the avocado and the sour cream just sets it off. So, that will do it. That is our Mexican lasagna. I hope you have enjoyed this episode, this installment of our Prep Once, Eat Twice as I get ready for knee surgery. And that will do it for, that will do it for me today. Okay, so I will see you on my next video.